China's President Xi Jinping has secured a historic third term as the Communist Party's leader. Far-right leader Giorgia Maloney has been officially inaugurated as Prime Minister of Italy, making her the country's first woman to take on the role. The race to become the UK's next Prime Minister heats up as former Finance Minister Rishi Sunak officially declares his candidacy. China's President Xi Jinping is now all but certain to sail through to a third term as the country's leader. Re-elected head of the Communist Party and cementing his place as the nation's most influential ruler since Mao Zedong. On behalf of the CPC New Central leadership, she says, I wish to thank the whole party sincerely for the trust you have placed in us. We'll keep in mind the party's nature, our own mission and responsibility, and work diligently in the performance of our duties. Appointing Xi as its general secretary for a precedent-breaking five-year term tilts the country decisively back towards one-man rule after decades of power sharing among its elites. The CCP also named a seven-member Politburo Standing Committee led by Xi, an inner circle of power dominated by the party's allies. He will be formally announced president during the government's annual legislative sessions in March. A new era in Italian politics has opened up as Prime Minister Giorgio Meloni joined former PM Mario Draghi at the Palazzo Chigi in Rome for the traditional bell ringing ceremony. The event signifies the handover of power, in this case from a technocrat government to the most far-right coalition since the end of the Second World War. Maloney is also the first female Prime Minister in the 76-year-old history of the Italian Republic. European Union chiefs are wary of the far-right taking power, but say they're ready to cooperate with the new coalition government, while Maloney says she's ready to work with the bloc's leaders. On Saturday, the new coalition was sworn into power by Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Although Maloney's post-fascist Brothers of Italy party won the recent election, in order to govern, they need the support of former Premier Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia and the far-right league led by Matteo Silvini. Former UK Finance Minister Rishi Sunak has officially confirmed he will run in the Conservative Party leadership contest in what will be his second shot in three months of becoming Prime Minister. Sunak, who reportedly has the support of over 120 MPs, said in a tweet that he would work to fix the economy and unite a fractured Tory party. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson looks likely to be Sunak's main challenger. He's yet to formally join the race, but close allies claim he already has enough support to make the ballot. British media has reported that Sunak held talks with Johnson on Saturday, fueling speculation the pair could strike a deal to unite the party. Former Cabinet Minister Penny Mordaunt was the first candidate to declare her leadership bid on Friday. She fell just short of making the final two in the previous leadership election, despite receiving strong support from colleagues. Candidates must secure 100 nominations by Monday afternoon. If two or more reach that threshold, lawmakers will vote to eliminate one and hold an indicative vote on the final two. Russian officials said on Saturday that two people were killed and 12 wounded by Ukraine shelling in the town of Shebekino in the Belgorod region close to the border. The regional health minister said one of the dead was a 14-year-old boy. The town has now started building protective structures, according to the local governor, who posted images on social media. Meanwhile in the south, pro-Russian authorities in Kherson are continuing to urge residents to leave in the face of Kyiv's advancing counter-offensive. Observers expect fierce clashes to take place in and around the city as both sides battle for control. On the Ukrainian side, the Air Force said critical infrastructure across the country was pounded by Russian missiles on Saturday, with several regions reporting strikes on energy facilities and power outages. President Vladimir Zelensky said the attacks were on a very wide scale. In his nightly address, he called on citizens to cut down their use of electricity. The main target for the Russian terrorists is energy. Therefore, please consume electricity even more consciously than before. The stability of our state energy industry depends on each city and district of Ukraine. 
Кожного району України залежить стабільність роботи енергетики всієї нашої держави. The General Staff of the Ukraine Armed Forces said Russian forces have been pushed out of more settlements in the Kherson region. Ukrainian forces are targeting resupply routes across a major river while inching closer to a full-scale assault on the key city. Hungary's national flag was hoisted with military honours in front of Parliament in Budapest on Sunday morning. In a state commemoration marking the anniversary of the anti-Soviet revolt, which began on the 23rd of October 1956. Children explored vehicles which remain intact from 66 years ago, when protests which began as peaceful student-led movements quickly transformed into an armed, country-wide revolution, known as the Hungarian Uprising, against the communist dictatorship and the Soviet occupation. Soviet tanks moved onto the streets to restore order. An estimated 2,500 Hungarians died and hundreds of thousands fled. Prime Minister Viktor Orban addressed crowds in Western Hungary. In his speech, Orban lauded the nationwide resistance efforts, but didn't pass up the opportunity to hit out at those on the left, who he said looked down on people from the countryside and resented the fact commemorations were taking place outside the capital. The ceremony was attended by President Katalin Novak, military officials, as well as members of the public. A Russian warplane crashed into a two-story residential building that housed two families in Irkutsk, a city in eastern Siberia. The plane's two crew members were killed in the crash, but there were no casualties on the ground. This is the 11th reported non-combat crash of a Russian warplane since Moscow invaded Ukraine. Dear Today Mataschitz, the Austrian billionaire and founder of Red Bull has died after a battle with cancer. The 78-year-old's death was confirmed by the championship-leading Formula One team. The entrepreneur built a global empire around the energy drink and was considered the richest man in Austria. It was on his business trips to Asia he got to know the market of energy and stimulant drinks, still completely unknown in Europe and the US. Little is known about his private life. He once said that he drank 10 to 12 cans of Red Bull a day himself. Sun, the beach and energy savings. The Spanish town of Benidorm in the so-called Costa Blanca has long been a popular destination for people from all over Europe. But now it is also the place to save on high energy bills, thanks to its mild climate. It's cheaper to stay here than in the Netherlands. It's much colder there. You have to turn on the heating and you have to pay the energy company for that. You have to be crazy to stay in the Netherlands. Here, you can enjoy the money you would otherwise spend on gas and electricity. The tourism sector is eyeing up the opportunity to increase the number of foreigners coming to the region. In some cases, it only costs around 50 euros to spend one night in a hotel in the low season. And flats are also getting more bookings. Most tenants come from the north of Europe, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Germany. It's clear why. All these people would otherwise lose a lot of money to heat their homes. We do not have that need in the south of Europe. The EU has accepted Spain's so-called Iberian exception, which gives the region the ability to decouple the price of gas from electricity for a year. I don't think this will last more than a year, but I would say for the time being, come to Spain and enjoy it. The option could cut customers' energy bills by up to 50 percent. Thousands of Mexicans crowded the streets of the capital Mexico City for the annual zombie walk. Doused in fake blood, wearing torn clothing and masks, the participants enjoyed the grisly parade after a three-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This year we're celebrating our 15th birthday, so the theme is the quinceañera, a typical 15th birthday party. For me, this is the first march I've attended. We're here for the 15th birthday party of the pandemic zombie. The organizers asked walkers to bring food to donate to the Global Food Banking Network. Mexico's first zombie walk dates back to 2007, four years after the craze started in Toronto in 2003.